Namaste to all. Sarvam Kalu Idam Brahma is a very famous statement used by the Neo Vedantists or the modern Advaita Vadis to prove that everything is Almighty God, to prove that other than Almighty God nothing else exists. They quote this verse Sarvam Kal Vidam Brahma from Chandogya Upanishad. This statement is called as a Shandilya Vidya. There was a Rishi called as Shandilya Rishi who realized Almighty God in Samadhi and after realizing Almighty God in Samadhi, he gives Upadesh. He gives Upadesh to the rest of the public like all of us. And when he starts his Upadesh, he starts with the statement Sarvam Kal Vidam Brahma. The problem is people only take only these three words and then translate it that Sarvam Kal Vidam Brahma, everything is Almighty God. They never go to the next, you know, the full verse. If we understand the full verse and if we understand the full khand, this is Tritiya Prapatak, third chapter, Chaudahave Khand, 14th Khand of Chandogya Upanishad. And this is, I think, four shlokas. If we understand the four shlokas very clearly, then we will come to a conclusion that Chandilya Maharaj is not speaking something Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma as we interpret today. He is speaking something more deeper. He is speaking from his Samadhi Avastha. He is speaking from his experience of realization of Almighty God. Even in one of the shloka where the Sarvam Kal Idam Brahma is coming, even if we understand that shloka itself in a full sense, then we will not get into the trap of the Neo Vedanta. See, Neo Vedanta or the modern Advaita Vad is a concept which is against Vedic Dharma that say, speaks about Advaitam. There is only Dvai means two, Advaita means not two. So there is no duality in this world. Everything is non dual. This world actually does not exist. This world, what you see, is an appearance in consciousness. So this world actually does not exist. Everything is Parabrahman only. When you realize, when you break the Maya, you will realize that you are Parabrahman and nothing else exists other than you yourself because you are experiencing this world from your consciousness. So there is only consciousness. There is only Parabrahman is what they interpret which is absolutely against the Vedic Dharma, against the Almighty God's knowledge of the Vedas. So let's understand this shloka Sarvam Kal Vidam Brahma. The shloka is like this. Sarvam Kal Idam Brahma Tad Jalan Iti Shanta Upasita Shanta Upasita Atakhalu Kratu Mayaha Purusho Yata Kratur Asmin Loke Purusho Bhavati Tatetaha Pretaya Bhavati Sa Kratum Kuruvit The Rishi is trying to give an advice for all of us for our lifetime in this one shloka he is giving a lifetime advice to all of us all of us means upasaks who wants to realize almighty god who wants to walk the path of dharma who wants to realize almighty god for those people this shloka is very very important for us to understand see sarvam khal vidam brahma is a typical language used by rishi munis like you know when you see my gita videos what i have made I have mentioned in several of my videos that this shloka, not I have mentioned, but based on my Acharya's knowledge, this shloka Sri Krishna is not speaking, he is speaking in Samadhi state. In Samadhi state, sometimes the Rishi Muni Tapasvi forgets that he is a Jivatma. He speaks on behalf of Paramatma. He speaks as if he is Paramatma because he on Samadhi, deep Samadhi, he forgets he is a Jivatma. But still he is a Jivatma only. So similarly, this is a state of realization. Sarvam Khal Vidam Brahma. For example, you know, this is a very typical experience for all of us in a daily basis. Like, we say that, take this sweet. Suppose you make halwa prasad in your, uh, in your house for, do, for putting in Agnihotra. After that, somebody, Atiti, comes to your house or your, uh, you know, the wife is preparing, the husband is coming from work. The wife says to husband that, please take this sweet, this is Agya Prashada, this is sweet. But the, it is not only sweet, this is made from Atta, this is made from uh, Chini. Sweet is also, Chini is also there, sugar is also there, but, but they call it sweet. It's not only sugar, it has many other, it has ghee, it has Atta or ingredients, then it has water inside, inside it and it has also sugar inside it. 
Sugar is only small quantity in that sweet, but still we call it as sweet, right? So that is the bhasha which we use for us to understand ourselves. This is sweet. This is salt. For example, you know, you are very thirsty, and uh, somebody is giving you. He has a bottle of salt uh, water. Salt water means he has taken water from the sea and then kept in a bottle and then he gives you. You are very thirsty and he gives you that water. You drink it fast because you are very thirsty. After drinking immediately, you will say, "Ye to namak hi namak hai." Bale hi wo pani hai, but fir bhi it is water. But still, we'll say this is salt. Is this is totally salt only? So the bhasha we must understand the person who is speaking, his bhavana. his state his stiti all these things we must understand before interpreting the upanishads all this knowledge are not my knowledge i do not have any knowledge to explain upanishads to you only because of my acharya or maharishi dayanand saraswati or other some acharyas in arya samaj whom i have listened because of those people knowledge and especially my acharya knowledge i am able to give you some knowledge about upanishad i don't have realization of sarvam kal vidam brahma my acharya has Sarvam khal vidam brahma is a realization of an acharya in samadhi. So here, just like that salt, we say, "Ye to namak hi namak hai." Isme to ye to pani hai hi nahi hai. We we feel like that because we are thirsty. When you drink salt water, you say that this is totally salt, but it's not totally salt. The salt percentage compared to water is so less. Even in salt water, if you take water versus salt, the percentage of salt with reference to percentage of water is so less. Still, we say it is salty salt. the same thing is what rishi says here sarvam khal vidam brahma because of your realization he understands because the previous sukta speaks about the Jiv brahma jyoti so when a, when a, when a acharya when a tapasvi when a yogi realizes he sees nothing other than almighty god he says everything is almighty god for me because everything is created by almighty god everything is sustained by almighty god's power that's why he sees sarvam khal vidam brahma it does not mean that everything is brahma but similar to salt water example please understand similar to sweet example everything is not sweet in that sweet sweet portion that when you prepare halwa for example you prepare halwa or kada prasad for agnihotra the amount of atta you put is so much and amount of ghee you put so much ghee and atta and water and you put little bit sugar but still you call it as sweet similarly because of his realization he realizes everything is almighty god everything is sustained by almighty god because he mentions the word sarvam kal vidam brahma taj tat jalan an jala an iti means tat that almighty god is j he is the one who creates everything he creates everything and la means he laya, laya karna pralaya karna laya means la means he is the one who destroys the universe he creates the universe he destroys the universe and an an means palan poshan karne wala he sustains the universe also tat jalan iti iti that brahma is the one who is doing this activity tat jalan an does not mean that brahma create he he gets created he gets maintained and he gets destroyed no he creates this universe ishwar ne sansar ko janam diya hai God created this universe God does not become this universe God destroys this universe God does not get destroyed in this universe me universe is sarvam the word sarvam itself means etkinjas jagatyam jagat my acharya has mentioned in his book sarvam kal vidam brahma see this book my acharya has made a separate topic on this sarvam kal vidam brahma this book is called as vedon se jharta sanatan satya he has mentioned so many ved mantras to prove that sarvam etkinja jagatyam jagat idam sarvam sarvam the word itself means omnipresent you can be omnipresent only when something else is there something else is there and you are omnipresent god is omnipresent in that the house is there you are present inside the house you you do not become the house so sarvam khal vidam brahma is the realization of that rishi and that rishi says he is the creator he is the destroyer he is the sustainer of the universe so shanta upasita he is giving a very very important advice to all of us he says shanta upasita be rest assured that he is the one who is sustaining the universe an iti shanta he is he is maintaining the universe he 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 will create the universe again when this universe gets destroyed 
एंड ही विल मेंटेन द यूनिवर्स सो शांत हो उपासित सो शांत हो जाओ बेचैन मत हो डोंट गेट फियरफुल डोंट गेट एंक्सियस डोंट गेट इन टू एंक्साइटी बट हाउ कैन यू बिकम फियरलेस बाई शांत उपासित बाई उपासना ऑफ दिस ब्रह्म हु इज द क्रिएटर ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्स वेन एवरी वन ऑफ अस अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस ऑलमेटी गॉड इज द वन हु क्रिएट्स हु डिस्ट्रॉयज एंड हु सस्टेन्स दिस यूनिवर्स एंड वेन वी अंडरस्टैंड वेन वी हैव फुल ईश्वर प्रणिधान ऑन दट परमात्मा पर ब्रह्म then our shanti will be built inside us slowly we will move out of fearfulness from fearfulness we will go to fearlessness because we understand that nothing actually gets destroyed even the universe gets destroyed it will go into prakriti form and this universe is getting destroyed by power of almighty god so why should i worry and he is the one who is maintaining the universe so why should i worry let me just to worship that almighty god upasana karo and upasana is a vedic term vedic upasana we must do उपासना डज नॉट मीन गोइंग टू टेम्पल डू अर्चना अभिषेक आराधना दूब अगरबत्ती दूबत्ती नो उपासना मीन्स वैदिक उपासना बिकॉज दिस दिस इज शांडिल्य विद्या शांडिल्य महर्षि शांडिल्य महर्षि स्पीक्स फ्रॉम द वैदिक नॉलेज सो दिस उपासना शुड बी वैदिक उपासना दट एवरी डे नेम जाप ऑफ ऑलमेटी गॉड एवरी डे संध्या उपासना एवरी डे अग्निहोत्र उपासना एवरी डे अष्टांग योग अभ्यास एवरी डे मेन्टेनिंग ब्रह्मचार्य स्पीकिंग द ट्रूथ लिसनिंग द ट्रूथ सर्विंग द आचार्य This is called as upasana. And further, the Rishi says, "Atha khalu krutu maya purusho." See the word used. One is Brahma. See this shloka speaks about Vedic Trayatvad. This shloka does not speak about the present Neo Vedanta or Advaita Vad. This shloka speaks about three eternal truths. One is the Para Brahma, which the Rishi realizes, and he gives the knowledge to all of us who is Jivatma. what he knowledge he says he says that this world is created maintained destroyed by that almighty god do upasana of that almighty god and further he clarifies athakalu krutu maya purusho he purusho e purusho krutu maya purusho what is krutu maya purusho this is jivatma not paramatma because ajurveda says in the last chapter 40th chapter 15th mantra the mantra says om kruto smar krutu krutu means gyan ज्ञान वाला जीवात्मा कर्म वाला ये कर्म करने वाले प्राणी ओम कृतो स्मर ओम ओम नाम का स्मरण करो डू द नेम जॉप ऑफ ऑल मेटी गाड ओम कृतु द सेम कृतु इज यूज यर अथ कृतुमय पुरुषो हे कृतुमय पुरुषो सी ही इज अड्रेसिंग दिस नॉट टू ऑल द पब्लिक ही इज अड्रेसिंग दिस श्लोका टू दो पीपल हुआ कृतुमय हुआ पुरुषार्थी एंड वन कैन बिकम पुरुषार्थी if he has the knowledge only without knowledge if somebody does hard work it will not be considered it he will do some mistakes also he may do wrong work also kratumaya means one who has the knowledge first and then he does the karma as per the knowledge so he is saying athak khalu kratumaya purusho yata kratu asmin loke purusho yata kratu jaise tum karm karte ho jaise tum gyan pate ho is sansar mein you are receiving knowledge in this world and you are doing karma in this world yatha krutu as and when and by which you are doing karma purusho asmin loke is loke asmin loke means in this janma you are doing karma and yatha krutu means he is saying that based on your karma based on your karma in this life purusho jivatma bhavati thatetah pratya bhavati we will get the result pratya means death bhut prat we say right there is no bhut prat but prat means dead body pratya bhavati after the death of this human body you are living in this human body but when you do kratu when you do karma as per vedas when you get the knowledge of the vedas yatha kratu asmin loke when you do vedik shubh karma in this life after death also you will start doing vedik shubh karma only so that means also opposite when you do non vedic deeds in this life after the death you will not get a human life to do vedic deeds deeds again so eta kratu asmin loke purusho bhavati tate tah pratya bhavati similarly when you do any karma when all of us we are doing karma for example i am i am doing karma of making videos i am doing karma of listening to my acharya for example 
and i am having i am having shraddha in the ved vidya i am not listening to my acharya for formality i am not listening to my acharya for pleasing my acharya i am listening to my acharya with a bhavana of let i must get out of this human body i must go out of the birth and death cycle if that is my attitude if that is my knowledge and i am listening to my acharya similarly you are doing the same thing in the next birth what happens the same sanskar will jag jayega the same sanskar will again take birth sanskar means the impressions the chitta see because the body dies the mind does not die along with the jivatma the mind the chitta and the other uh, prana vital pranas will travel to the next birth so the mind has the this sanskars the vedic sanskar the vedic gyan listen from acharya everything is in, in the mind similarly whatever adharma karma we have done everything is in, in in the mind when we do adharma the adharma will take birth what you sow you will reap similarly when you sow shubh karma in this janma yatha kratu asmin loke bhavati purusho bhavati tateta satetah pretya bhavati the same thing will also continue in the next janma in the next janma again you will become more vairagyavan slowly 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 one point of time we will start realizing sarvam kalvidam brahma we will realize almighty god and when somebody realizes almighty god my acharya says the moment somebody attains samadhi he will that jivatma actually in samadhi forgets itself one lady was asking me that if jivatma forgets himself in samadhi and says that i am almighty god by aham brahma asmi in samadhi that means that jivatma is agyani that lady was asking me no no it's not agyani the jivatma actually de- forgets that it exists this is the state of highest uh, achievement in the life this is not agyan this is paripurna vidya in paripurna vidya the jivatma actually completely dissolves its ego in paramatma and the jivatma will realize itself as paramatma only but it will not become paramatma so this is the state of sarvam kalvidam brahma by doing kritu by doing ved vedokt shubh karma and for, for finally what rishi says sa kratum kurvita sa kratum isliye sa kratum kurvita do the do the kratu go to acharya listen vedas serve the acharya come back home or stay in the gurukul acharya will give you some knowledge do meditation on that knowledge take notes of that knowledge if you have doubts ask that acharya next day acharya will clarify you then try to implement in life this is kratu kratum kuruvita so by following this vedik shubh karma only you can attain sarvam kalvidam brahma as i have attained the shandalya maharishi saying so this is a knowledge which is not just sarvam kalvidam brahma sarvam kalvidam brahma everything is almighty everything is almighty no shant hoke upasana karo and 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 similarly you know when something happens in life like you know many people have this uh, problem they have this doubt that pata nahi kya hone wala hai pata nahi mera agla janm theek hoga ki nahi i don't know whether i will get a human birth or not i don't know what is going to happen in the next birth i do not know anything he says tat jalaniti he is he is sustaining the universe is nyayakari paramatma why are you worrying about your future do your kratu now forget the future give in the give everything in the hands of almighty god so this is the this is the you know prapti of this kind of way of living and also further the uh, rishi says tat jalaniti means we will not have even doubt on our acharya or almighty god or vedic dharma whether god exist or not all these things will get clarified and further you know in the next shloka there is one one word used by the rishi he says tato na vichikitsati there is no sanchaya for that param, for this purusha who is doing kritu tato na vichikitsati he will attain a state he will understand completely this working of the universe he will understand that this universe functions because of almighty god and he will understand this universe is from prakriti and everything will go back to prakriti tato na vichikitsati at that point of time because of his shant upasana he will come out of all the possible sanchaya of this world he will not have any sanchaya about paramatma jivatma prakriti that is the state of realization of a yogi so we must not get into the translation of the present neo vedantis for example sarva priyananda swami ji i have listened to many of his lectures he says sarvam kalvidam brahma everything is almighty god everything is parabrahman everything is parabrahman don't take at face value understand this shloka further tat jalaniti 
क्रतुमय पुरुष यथा क्रतुम अस्मिन् लोके बवती तथा प्रेतय बवती आफ्टर द डेथ द कर्मा विल गो इन टू योर नेक्स्ट लाइफ ऑन द सेम संस्कार आज विल गेट उत्पन्न होता है अगले जन्म में अभी हमारे संस्कार वट एवर संस्कार वी हैव कर्मा वी डू द कर्मा विल गेट एस अ संस्कार एंड द नेक्स्ट जन्म द सेम संस्कार विल स्प्रउट and when the same sanskar will sprout you will further do tapasya if you do kaam krodh madlob ahankar in this janma this is not kratu maya this is some karma but the same kaam krodh madlob ahankar will get inside our chitta and the next birth also we will do kaam krodh madlob ahankar for doing kaam krodh madlob ahankar god will say that why do why do you need a human body go in another body because in other body for example you take the birth of a, the jivatma takes the birth of a lion it can do krodh also no problem it can do kaam also because lions does la, the sensual pleasure kaam vasana with male female for days together so kaam krodh matlab ahankar you can do in in uh, other bodies you do not need a human body that's why here the rishi says kratumaya purusho sa kratum kurvita do become become a kratu become a jivatma who is purusharthi become a jivatma who is having the vedic knowledge become a jivatma who is ready to listen to the acharya become a jivatma who is ready to serve an acharya become a jivatma who is ready to do paropakari become a jivatma who is ready to give up everything for almighty god and vedic dharma become a jivatma who is completely surrendering to almighty god in ishwar pranidan then the sarvam kalyudam brahma stage will come to all the possible all those jivatmas this is the assurance of shandilya rishi and that's why this this sukta is this this kand is called the shandilya vidya most important point thank you so much namaste om